My name is Justin and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley and in this video I'm going to talk about how I got my fourth UX design internship with <laughs> with Google Good morning everyone, welcome back to the fourth episode of my internship journey and today is all about my fourth UX design internship with Google in summer 2017 when I was still studying industrial design at Georgia Tech in 2014, I was like, hmm, can I intern at Google? What does it take to intern there? Short answer, yes, and I did it. But I'm not the only one. Many people I know in the ID program before and after me also got to intern at Google. Long answer, I will let the rest of the video speak for it. And here are the three tips and insights that could be helpful if you consider applying. Number one, know the design process inside out. Number two, research the teams. Number three, Structure your projects properly. Let's dive right in. Number one, know the design process inside out. The design process is the fundamental. Whether your major is industrial design or UX, you still have got to take classes on design methods, user research, need finding, and everything else along that line. What you need to know is the full design process that is iterative, that is cyclical, and every detail in each phase of the process. And you should know this by heart, like how the full process go and how each phase affects the entire process or the other phases of the process. This is very basic, but very critical. This is like breathing. Without it, you are I'm highlighting this design process because of my Google interview process. In my interview, they asked me, how do you approach design in general? This is not meant to be a trick question and they're not looking for fancy answers. They just want to make sure you know how to design, make sure you know the fundamental, aka the design process. It's more or less a reassuring question for the hiring manager so that you know what you are supposed to know. And therefore, my answer is as standard as you can imagine. So going through the whole process in a more of a high level view, research, design, prototype, test, loop, loop, loop. Then drilling down specifically into the research phase, it will be something like interviewing users, finding out their needs, both the implicit and explicit needs, market research, etc. Then it will be ideation, mock-up, prototype, testing with end users. Does that sound familiar? This is an individual project that covers market research, semi-structure interviews, affinity diagram, persona, ideation, wide range, user testing, interactive prototypes, more testing with those prototypes, flow diagram, visual polish, interaction animation, product page, and I think that's the end of the list. Literally anything I can think of back then to create a thorough project. See, everything is connected. This sounds like a dumb question. It is and it is not. Some companies ask and some don't. And since you're supposed to know this by heart, this should not be a problem. If you don't already know about it, that's totally fine. Just Google it or read about it or even ask a professor about it. This is totally in your control and you are capable of nailing it. I want to give you another example to show you why you might want to know the design process super well. During my Google interview, the same team asked me another question that I would say by far the hardest across all my interview questions. And this question has somewhat become standard nowadays, so just keep that in mind. If you were to design a, how would you go about it? A life design challenge question. It's hard because there's nothing really you can prepare beforehand, but at the same time, it's not impossible because you should have known the design process. So technically, you are halfway there. With challenges like this, there's no silver bullet or blanket statement that you can use to apply on anything. So in this case, just pull on your designer hat, take the prompt, and go through all the steps and phases in the design process. For example, if you are given a prompt that goes, if you were to design a car infotainment system, how would you go about it? Then the basic framework would be just like design, ideation, prototype, test, and loop if necessary. That's the high level design process. Then you want to go phase by phase. First is research. You want to find out who the end users are. Is this car infotainment system mainly for boba millennials, 95 commuters, soccer moms, or happy grandpas? Depends on who they are, they want and need different things. Millennials probably want more entertainment and 9 to 5 commuters probably want more navigation information. Then you can come up with ideas to address their needs or eliminate pain points with existing systems. Then you go make some prototypes to test and validate your hypothesis and design choices. Again, this is a really quick 20 second sample answer, but you got it, right? Bottom line, 
you really want to understand the design process inside out and keep practicing it in your school projects. So if you were ever asked about it, it should be a no-brainer. Number two, research the teams. Do you have a few companies that you want to intern at or get a job at? Then this should help. Do some research on your favorite company and find out what are the teams and products that they have. Product. Product. Google, for example, is a huge company with tons of different businesses and products, meaning tons of different teams. If you were to intern at Google, you will be interning under a specific team. It's not really the same as what you see in the movie, The Internship, where you would do a bunch of different intern challenges. No, it was a comedy, not a documentary. So don't always fall into that Hollywood fantasy. If you were intern at Google, and if you were really interested in organizing information, then you would probably end up with the search team. Or if you are really interested in videos, then maybe you'll be with YouTube. Or if you like VR, then maybe Daydream. You get the idea. In the last video, I talked about self-understanding. Self-understanding. This by all means is to understand yourself better. To be able to find out what you like and what you want, which is all about you. When you got that part done, this is the next step for you. To find out about the company, the other half of the formula. At this particular company, what team or teams match what you are looking for. This is important, especially to a UX Google internship, because there is something called the intern questionnaire, which is a long Google form that you need to fill out, including information such as your degrees, your area of interest, your skills, your expectation, etc. Then Google will pull all those data into a host matching system where host slash hiring manager will apply filters to find their ideal interns. For example, a manager on Daydream might want a student that is third year and above with at least one prior internship, knows JavaScript, and is interested in VR. Then the hiring manager will be applying these filters to find his interns. Therefore, if you are really into VR and you find out about there's a VR team at Google called Daydream, then you can include keywords such as VR or Daydream into your questionnaire. Doing so can increase the chance of you getting an interview with the VR team at Google if that team is actually hiring. So this is less about what the company mission is or who the CEO of the company is, but more about something that is more directly relevant to the internship application process, such as the products, the teams, or even who the hiring managers are. Number three, structure your projects properly. No one knows about your project better than you do. This is always true. And yet there are a million ways to showcase your projects. You knowing everything about your projects doesn't mean you can show them in the best way. So in this tip, I'm going to share some of my thoughts and suggestions that might just make your day easier. There's some basic information I highly recommend you showing for every project. Problem statement, your role, highlights of your design, and the end result. And this is also the framework. The reason behind it is that the hiring manager would like to know what problem that you're solving and what did you do to solve that problem? Did you do it by yourself or with a team? If with a team, which part are you responsible for? Did you just do the research, just prototyping or across the entire process? These things help your hiring manager really quickly understand what your involvement is in this project. Recently, when I was updating my portfolio, I rewrote some of those and moved it from the bottom of my portfolio to the top of it to make it more glanceable. The highlights of your design are basically the pitch of your design. Tell me three things. Why your design works, why is it better, and what's so special about it. It's better because it gets rid of some pain points, and it's special because it uses some smart mechanism. Finding out what they are and calling them out will help make your project stand out a lot, and makes it super easy for your hiring manager to go through maybe even make him or her more curious about your projects. There's no need to make your project super long. Think about an iPhone product page. It's basically a few scrolls highlighting the most important features. Then you will be like, ooh, this is awesome. I want to buy this product. You are essentially trying to do the same thing for the hiring manager to say, ooh, this student does great work. I want to hire him as an intern. At the same time, there are always some merits documenting your process. Because we are human, we forget, and having your process documented will be handy to reference it later. You don't need to include everything in your project page. Just keep the juicy highlights and talk about the rest of the details if you are asked in the interview. 
Are you worried that you don't remember everything? You have your process documented, right? That's the perfect time to bring it back up, reference it, and refresh your memory. For example, you're not going to include every detail of the five user testing session in your portfolio, right? But you know you did the testing. So if you were asked, you can say, I did this testing on this particular feature and the first user said A, B, C, and D. So I work on the next iteration to address that feedback. If you ask Johnny Ive to elaborate on a particular design choice around an iPhone, I'm sure you can go on and on and on. Even though the iPhone product page is only three scrolls, he will still know all the details. So should you with your projects. All right, guys, that concludes my fourth UX design internship with Google and the three key ingredients to getting this offer are know the design process inside out, research the teams, and structure your projects properly. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you find this video useful. If so, transcend the like button for the awesome blue to show up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. This will help motivate me so much in producing more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Cheers.